<laughs> Rookie mistake. I did. Uh, okay. Awesome. That those were the guitars. Right here is my amplifier called Satan. Yay. <laughs> Isn't that the most awesome thing ever? It's called Satan. But uh, basically, it really fits the amp because it's the most brutal, brutal shit I ever heard. And uh, it's I'm very proud about it because I was a part of designing it uh, together with Mike Forden, who is the amp designer for Randall. And uh, we actually started, I started working with him before Randall came along uh, with a Fortin Satan. We did an amplifier for me that we both designed and I told him what features I wanted and stuff like that. Then Randall came along, hired Mike Fortin and wanted to do a signature amplifier of the Satan. So lucky day. <laughs> and. Uh, even more weird is that I'm playing Washburn and Randall and Dimebag was playing Washburn and Randall and that's just a weird coincidence, but uh, I don't mind. <laughs> um, anyway, so Randall came along and like, hey, okay, we're gonna ship you over to Canada and you get to spend five days with Mike Forden in his basement and you're gonna design the best fucking amplifier in the world. And uh, so I went there. We went through, oh, it was so nerdy, I tell you, I love it. I'm an amp, amp nerd. We went through every component, like <coughs> tubes and transformers and small fucking pieces of, I don't know what, but Mike, Mike loves that shit. Uh, so we really went from top to bottom with this amp to make it fit me. And I mean, that's, not, I, I mean, I know exactly what I want because I've been pr playing every amp on the w in the world. So, uh, I mean, it's, um, I'm super stoked about this amp. It's really me. As soon as, if anyone wants to sound like me, just plug into one of these. It's, uh, it's kind of weird. But uh, basic features, it has a clean shell, which is a clean shell. It's really good. But, I mean, uh, who uses clean anyway? No? <laughs> but, I mean, it's a super awesome clean. Because uh, it's all because of the the Mike Forden, Forden genius thing and that the, the I mean the, all the components, the transformers and tubes are such, such high quality uh, and uh, they produce this really awesome and big chunkiness in the whole amp, in the whole power section so uh, I mean yeah good talk uh, but the awesome thing about this amp is of course the distortion channel okay there we go and it's, uh, I'm going to go walk through a bit. It has three gain knobs. And as you know, three is better than one. <laughs> right? <laughs> more is more. Like Yngwie said. Um, anyway, it has an overall gain knob like any other amplifier. Makes sense? But it also has a low frequency gain and a high frequency gain. And what do you need that for? Well, I'm going to tell you. The cool thing about this is that you can this you can basically design your own type of distortion for this amplifier or for your guitar, which is something unique. I mean, you can go from a... I'm going to demonstrate. This is awesome. Uh, I'm going to demonstrate real quick. If I want a super fussy stoner sound, listen to this. What I did right now was that I turned up the GURF, the, high, the low frequency gain. That's the base, uh, the base of the gain and then uh, pull down the grind, which is the aggressiveness, really. And the, uh, the result is kind of a big, fussy sound, and it's uh, kind of awesome. I mean, it's so much fun. <laughs> I mean, if you really like that, but you can totally go to t the direct opposite for a, you can dial down the low frequency gain and dial up the high frequency gain and you can play Meshuga all day. <laughs> Sorry, Mishuga. I tried. <laughs> but, I mean, you can basically dis design the distortion to fit your guitar. So if you have an 8-string, for example, uh, and a lot of amplifiers have a problem with uh, keeping the lowest string tight, you can just dial down the girth to fit that 8-string that or your uh, whatever you use. Um, 
So that's a really awesome feature that's very unique and I haven't seen it in, in any other amplifier before. And uh, yeah, it's super awesome. I love that. Uh, then it, it also has a sweep knob and the, it's not like a regular mid sweep knob. I'm done soon, I promise. I saw you yawning <laughs> back there. Uh, but it's basically, it's not a mid sweep. It's more of a sweep that changes the whole tone stack of the amp. So it actually affects bass, middle and treble and it's more to dial in cabinets rather than to, uh, to uh, be a, another voicing or something like that. I mean, if you have a cabinet that's really mid-range, it has a mid-range hump, you can dial that away with the sweep knob, or if you have a really scooped uh, cabinet, you can dial that up. It's really, that, that's also another feature that I haven't seen in guitar, but that's something I asked for because in a studio environment and also live, you know, you never know how your amp is going to sound in a room <coughs> if it's small like this or a big stadium. I mean, they can sound totally different, even if the same setting, same cabinet, everything. And good song. <laughs> um, take your time. No pressure. All right. So that's a very unique feature that I was asking for because I wanted to be able to, to dial in cabinets at home for recording, but it's also available for just dialing in a cabinet for live stage as well. So that's a another super awesome feature. Uh, bass, middle and treble, right? Yes. Uh, kill switch. What does that do? It's actually a kill mode, I would say. It adds plus six decibels of gain on both channels. So it's basically a boost. And I mean, if you don't, if you think that you don't have enough gain, I mean, you can go, it's stupid. You don't need that much gain, but if you need more, there's more. More is more, okay? Uh, <clears throat> uh, another cool feature about the amp is the fact that it has uh, two 606s and two KD88s in the power amp section. And uh, this is something we tried over and over at Mike's place, and uh, it's really awesome. You get the growl from the 606s, which I really love, but you also get that glassiness and aggressiveness from the KD88s. But so it, it, that makes the amp sound really killer. But the cool thing is that you can shove any power tubes you want in, in the amp. Uh, Frederick Tordenal in Meshuga, he has his own Satan. And uh, he's, he's using uh, uh, EL34s in his. And it's super cold and super awesome Meshuga sounding. And, um, and that's cool. Frederick is actually, he's a Randall and Dorsey now. So they're designing a, a, a signature amplifier for Frederick, which is based on the Satan. <laughs> Makes me really proud. Uh, yes. Uh, okay, that's the amp, and uh, both the amps and the, the guitars are available through Master Music. And I think uh, you guys have two seven strings like this one, right over there, that they can try, yeah. right? Yeah. They may try. No. Yeah. They yeah, can try. Yeah. yeah. You can try. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I'm going to show you my pedal board real quick. Something I'm really a big fan of is keeping things simple. And that's what I wanted with the amplifier. I mean, I wanted it to sound good without having to use a fucking boost. That's, you, when you buy an amplifier that costs 2,000 euros, and then buy a boost that costs cost 100 or 50 euros, and plug it into to squash the amp, I mean, it might sound okay, but it doesn't make sense. You're using a cheap pedal into an expensive amplifier. I mean, you're supposed to be able to plug it in, and it's going to sound like this straight away. And I mean, this is not a squashed type of distortion when you boost a dual rectifier. This is a very dynamic and cuts, really cuts through, which is something I also asked for. But I mean, if you, if you don't think this is enough, you can boost this shit as well. It's not necessary, but it sounds insane. Uh, anyway, uh, my guitar goes straight into a, a TC Electronics Polytune, which I usually don't have on, with me. This is my touring pedal board, by the way. Uh, so basically, it's just a guitar into the tuner, into a noise gate, and then straight into the amplifier. And uh, from there, in the effects loop, to a Seymour Duncan vapor trail delay. And that's it. That's my signal chain right there. Very simple. Uh, and I, I, I mean, it's done. I don't need an EQ to form the sound or anything like that. It's, this is it, you know. And I like having it this way because let the, 
for me, it's always been the more stuff you use, the bigger chance something will break or that a cable will break or whatever, or stuff, stuff just break, okay? It happens. So I, I like to know if something goes wrong, I can quickly figure out where the hell is it, you know? So I really like this, this size of a pedal board right here. And uh, this right here is a thing called the switch gizmo. And it basically it makes the, the amplifier MIDI controllable. I mean, it has a, the app comes with a foot switch. It's somewhere. I probably threw it away. Oh, oh, it's, oh, it's up there. So you can switch between the modes. But uh, right now, this whole amplifier and pedal board is MIDI uh, controlled. So I have a MIDI pedal board right here. So I just uh, decide if I want to the loop on, and it's so I don't have to tap dance to get my sound. I just want to push once, and there's the lead. And uh, it's a really awesome unit that can basically turn any amplifier into a, a MIDI controllable amplifier. So, unfortunately, there aren't any distributors in Europe. Stupid. But, no buts. <laughs> okay. So, that's, uh, that's my equipment, basically. And uh, I was thinking... Maybe we should have like a Q&A thing going on right now. If you have any questions uh, before I play my last song, this is the time. Mm -hmm. Yes? Uh, what does it feel like, the, um, the Evertune guitar? Like a fixed bridge or a Floyd Rose? No, it's a fixed bridge. Does it feel like a fixed bridge? Yeah. I mean, even <laughs> it's floating saddles, but I mean, it's a fixed bridge. It's not like, you know, you don't... You, you, it's not a floating tremolo in that no, sense. I mean, it on, works on like the, a fixed on bridge. Pick, on the picking hand, when you yeah, pick it's, hard. No, it's, it's, a, it's like a fixed bridge. Good. It's uh, no different than this, I would say. Uh, it's just that it, it's a totally different kind of mecha uh, mechanical operation in that alien technology that they, <laughs> they have to keep the guitar in tune. <laughs> but, uh, yeah, it, it feels uh, normal, I would say. Uh, yes, sir? About the... the, the um your composition times, like you are home at your desk and you say, okay, today I'm going to write a new riff or a new song. Yes, good question. What's I get that a lot. How do I, process? how do I create and write a song? And I have a really good answer because <laughs> I've been doing it for so long that I've found, a, oh, don't push that. <laughs> I found a really good way that, that fits me. And it's, uh, I, I think it's an awesome tip. It's very simple. When I'm at home, I, you know, when I was in my metal band, I, it, we jammed songs in the rehearsal space. That's usually how you write songs and get a good feel going. But when I get sick and tired of everyone in my band, and I quit, my, uh, quit that band, I kind of try to do the same way at home. I basically have in my mind, okay, I'm going to make a, a fast song, or a slow-paced song, or a sh shuggy song. And I write and compose drums first. So I have a full song of drums without even having a riff. And uh, the reason I do this is because then I just push record and jam to that drum track. And I get the same kind of feeling that I would get when jamming with an awesome drummer. And that tune track drummer is a lot better than the drummer I had in my recent band. So it was a good jam, I would say. And when I, didn't like, when I came to a part that I didn't really get a good riff going by, I do, at the side, have a riff library. It's very easy. I just, whenever I, another thing that I do, let's go back a couple of steps, is that I open a log logic project, push record, and just fool around, you know, sing, and, you know, and, and riffing. And occasionally, there will come up, a, there'll be a riff that's like, holy shit, okay. Cut out that <laughs> riff, save as, into folder, Shuggy riff, or verse riff, or chorus riff, or haunted riff, haunted solo part, uh, cheesy metal part. I mean, and I have probably over 200 or 300 riffs. But this is a really good thing, because when I do jam songs, and I can come to a part that I can't really get going, or I need a chorus part that's like, okay, I really need a good chorus, I go to the riff library, choruses, okay, can I make this fit? Yes. Detune or whatever. I, so I just shove that riff in there. And it's a very time efficient way to write songs. I don't have a, the, all the time in the world. I have a son and a wife. <laughs> and I have another kid on the way, actually. 
Um, so it's not gonna. I need to find a good and efficient way to write music, and that's something I really like to share with you guys. And I hope you you try at least give it a try and write like that, because it really works for me. Okay. And good. Yes. Okay. If I can ask you another question. Go ahead. And uh, obviously, it's different for you when you are in the haunted and when you are home alone. Because you 